today? Did that kind of come to your mind? Yeah. And you may be sitting there thinking, I don't need to talk on forgiveness. We'll see, huh? Because <laughs> I think that all the time, and then I'm like, oh. And I do this every year because it is so important. Uh, because I promise you that, um, you know, we have unrighteous judgments on a daily basis. And if we have unrighteous judgments on a daily basis, then, I, then uh, there's an opportunity and an avenue for forgiveness. Before I forget, I want to say a welcome to my friend and my mentor, Reverend Jerry Comstock. Jerry uh, kind of was born here out of Christ Church Unity, and um, she was the minister over at the Unity Spiritual Center, and she's just a delight and a love. So welcome, Reverend Jerry Comstock. And I say welcome home. <laughs> We're glad you're our guest today, but welcome home. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so last week we talked about freedom through forgiveness, part one of self. Recognizing that when we're holding shame and guilt within ourselves that we are literally blocking the free flow of the goodness of God, of the love of God. You know, you'll hear some scripture today that talks about um, God forgiving us our sins, and we don't believe that there's this entity outside of us that is forgiving us of our sins. What we believe is that um, the moment that we release that this free flow that God is, is whoosh, it's always right there, and we, we open up those floodgates. Today we're going to be talking about forgiveness of others, and this is such an important journey. And it's not just a journey that we make on occasion. It honestly can be a journey that we make every evening before we go to bed um, to kind of reconcile in our own beingness where maybe we have been unrighteous in our judgment, where maybe we have used some slander against somebody throughout the day, and to move in, or that we feel that that, that has happened to us, that we move into that place of forgiveness um, every night. In Ephesians, it says, get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to each other, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And what we do know is that our master teacher, Jesus, we love to call him our master metaphysician, he was all about forgiveness. And, and the really beautiful thing was he, he didn't say you had to go through this process to be forgiven. It was just in a moment he said your sins are forgiven. You are forgiven. And he wanted us to, um, he was showing us how we can show up with people in our world and um, in our, our personal lives. He said um, in the, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And meaning again, when we move into that place of release and forgiveness, whoosh, there is no forgiveness necessarily that has to happen in the realm of the divine. In Matthew 6, 14, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, the Father will not forgive your sins. Again, it's all about just us putting the blocks up there. And Mark eleven twenty five, 25, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, Forgive him so your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Okay, some things about forgiveness. First of all, forgiveness does not mean that we condone the actions. Forgiveness does not say that the behavior is acceptable. That is not what forgiveness is about. In fact, um, we talk a lot about setting healthy boundaries um, in, those, in those kinds of things. Forgiveness does not mean that you have to ever be in a physical relationship with somebody again. Uh, now, sometimes that happens. Um, you know, I've definitely heard of occasions when, um, you know, really atrocious things have happened and people come together and they become friends. That isn't necessarily part of the journey. Um, and that's okay. Uh, and, and a lot of times we're going to work on forgiveness for people who have already uh, transcended this physical world. And how many of us have heard the adage, forgive and forget? How's that working? Not so much. Okay, so forgiveness does not mean forgetting. What forgiveness does is it allows us to let go of the pain in the memory. And if we can let go of the pain in the memory, 
we can still have the memory, but it no longer controls us. When we are living with the pain in the memory, when we are talking about it all the time, when we're focused on it all the time, then we are still puppets of the past. We're still allowing something that is no longer relevant um, to uh, dictate our experience today. And um, I like that the idea that forgiveness does not change the past. Oprah Winfrey said that forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. And that's really, that's really pretty big that, you know, we can let that be. Um, a couple of quotes here. Forgiveness helps you make peace with your past, which enlarges your future. And forgiveness is the key to a greater experience of love and joy and abundance in your life. And that is absolutely true. If you are experiencing uh, challenges in any area of your life, I encourage you to go within and just open yourself up to see if there's something that you're holding on to in the way of resentment or, again, you know, shame and guilt for yourself. Forgiveness is a choice. It is a choice, and it's my choice, and it's your choice. It, we all get to make that choice. Now, I'm going to say right here, it doesn't mean it's easy, and I would never assume to say that it's a simple thing. It's going to take whatever time it takes, um, but it is so worth the effort. It is so worth diving into this and releasing and letting go of these hooks that are keeping us in our past. Now, it's, it, it is our choice, and the thing is, is that we want to blame other people for the way our life is today, for how something turned out, and I am not for one moment discounting or diminishing some of the crazy experiences that have happened in many of your lives, because I know there have been some extreme circumstances, so I am not diminishing that. What I am saying is that nothing lies outside the realm of forgiveness. Nothing lies outside the realm of forgiveness, that it is possible no matter what. And here's the thing about forgiveness, it's all about your freedom. I will say here though as well, because I've heard it said in our spiritual circles that forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person and it's all about us. And in unity, that really isn't what we teach because we teach that we are one. And so, as, as I'll be sharing, what we're going to see is that as I move into that place of forgiveness, it absolutely has an effect on the other person because of the way that I'm going to move through that process um, and that journey. I know for myself, um, part of my uh, inability to be able to forgive was I wasn't able to let go of the pain. And when I dug a little further, I recognized that I, I felt that I needed some type of acknowledgement um, from the person who inflicted the pain upon me. I felt like I needed an apology or something to say, hey, I see you and that was horrible. But what I got clarity on was, was it worth me holding on to the pain for an acknowledgement that I may never get? What's the answer to that question? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, and you know the beautiful thing about forgiveness, and this is what I really got clarity on? Once we finally have truly let go and we're in that place of love, you don't need the acknowledgement anymore. You don't need it. I mean, if you get it, that's great but it doesn't dictate or um, decide whether you're gonna forgive or not. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk for a minute what unforgiveness might look like and feel like, and I'm gonna share with you from Reverend Patricia Bass. She is now the, uh, the person that is over Silent Unity up at Unity Village. She has spoken here uh, before, and she did a talk on do I have to forgive? And so she said that, um, that the event is over, but we carry it with ourselves. And so she used this analogy. So imagine it's like a sack of potatoes. Now hopefully we don't have this many 
uh, unforgiveness things in our in our sack here <laughs> but you even take four or five and you carry that around for a while and what these potatoes represent is they represent all of the people including ourselves that we're holding resentment towards that we're that we're slandering with our words that we're holding unrighteous judgment about um, um, and have you ever kept potatoes a little too long and they grow tendrils which are actually roots, and then they get moldy, and then what? Oh, they're stanky. <laughs> well, what she says is we carry the past with us like this heavy sack of potatoes. The thing is, is that the longer that we hold on to it, the roots start to take effect in our heart. And um, and that's why we want to nip this quicker than, uh, you know, than later, because then we don't let that take um, root in our heart. If we hold on to these things for too long, our life begins to stink. And remember last week we talked about if you're a victim, you know, eventually people don't want to be around you because it's stinky to be around somebody who's a, a victim. David Owen Ritz, the author of Keys to the Kingdom, says, and this is so interesting, the past isn't our past. It has become our present at a different level, and it will be our future unless we release. In other words, we're not leaving our past in the past. We're bringing it right here to this now moment, and we're reliving it, and we're feeling. When you're reliving it, do you feel it? All that stuff, you know, comes up. Absolutely. That smelly, um, gross uh, bag of potatoes is going to be ours until we release it. So how do we release? A lot of times we're in a place where we want to forgive. We're ready. Sometimes we're not quite there. So I always love this, is that I want to want to forgive. I want to want. Sometimes I have to want to want to want to forgive. <laughs> you know, it depends on how far it is, but you know, if I at least am in the I want to want to want to forgive, <laughs> I'm somewhere on this. And so Gerald Jambos Jampolsky, who is the author of Forgiveness, the greatest healer of all, said, forgiveness is the willingness to let go of the hurtful past. It is the, the decision to no longer suffer. Isn't that great? Do you guys, do we want to suffer? No, although sometimes we get comfortable in our uncomfortableness, don't we? But we don't really want to suffer. Um, to heal your heart and soul, it is the decision to no longer find value in hatred or anger or blame or unrighteous judgment. It is the choice to let go of the desire to hurt another because of something that is already in the past. It is our willingness to see the light in other people rather than to judge or to condemn them. That's pretty big. So the first step, my friends, is willingness. It's a willingness to let go of the blame. It's a willingness to let go of our anger. It's a willingness to let go of our attachment to the pain. It's a willingness to let go of making the other person wrong. It's a willingness to give up victimhood. And here's the thing about victimhood. There's a payoff in that because we get attention. And so we must be willing to let go of victimhood. The second thing that I want to encourage you to do is to feel it. This is not about burying our head in the sand. That's not what we're about in unity. We are about looking at things and facing the reality of it and feeling whatever feelings are there. I was just reading something on Facebook the other day that talked kind of about spiritual malpractice where it's all about feeling good no matter what. And sometimes we just don't feel good, right? Sometimes we're mad, we're frustrated, we're hurt. It's a normal part of our human process. And so let yourself feel what it is that you need to feel in that. But, but here's the next step to that. It's all right to sit on your pity pot every now and then, but when you're done, just remember to flush. <laughs> so there comes a point when it's time to, to get out of that. The third thing is to get it out. Um, now, you know, if you have a friend that you can talk to about it, uh, maybe a counselor, the thing that I learned when I was in school um, w was uh, to take just one piece of paper and just to start writing everything that I felt, everything without 
editing anything. And then you write over top of that and over top of that. And the really amazing thing was when I got done with this and I looked at that paper and it was just filled with all of this yuck, I realized that that was in me. If that's inside of me, what is that doing to my body? What is that doing to my mind? And so to be able to get it out in that way was so cathartic and healing. And then, you know, with that, you just um, burn it. Um, Imelda Shanklin, wonderful old time minister, said, to accomplish forgiveness within ourselves, and this is a huge part of this journey, we must pray to God to release in us his forgiving love, the love that does not take offense. We must let that love bring its light and cleansing and innocence into the inner chambers of our consciousness that there may no longer hide in us any offense, any hurt, any sorrow. In other words, you're not doing this alone. There is this wonderful spirit of love and goodness that is here for you. And this is probably the most important part of the journey, is to turn within and just to say, God, help me. Help me in my inability to be able to do this on my own. And let your love, let that be what, um, what fills me, that I can see this differently. And then the fourth step is uh, from Luke 6, 27 and 29, but I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. So we do good and we bless others by praying for them. Now, I'm gonna share with you a prayer, actually it's a song, that we might, this is the way we might want to pray for our enemies. And this is from, this is called Jason and the Long Road to Love. It says, I haven't been to church since I don't remember when. Things were going great till they fell apart again. So I listened to the preacher and she told me what to do. She said, you can't go hating others who have done wrong to you. Sometimes we get angry, but we must not condemn. Let the good Lord do his job. You just pray for them. I pray your brakes go out running down a hill. I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill. I pray and knocks you in the head like I'd like to. I pray your birthday comes and nobody calls. I pray you're flying high when your engine stalls. I pray all your dreams never come true. Just know wherever you are, honey, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Honestly, in our humanness, haven't we felt that sometimes? Absolutely, absolutely. However, that's not what we're teaching today. <laughs> so a couple of things that you uh, might do. There's a beautiful kind of a short Buddhist prayer. You know, just may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and happy, and, or may, and at ease, and may you be happy. And then Mary, in, a number of weeks ago, talked about the Hawaiian forgiveness, Ho'oponopono. And it is where you simply you know, bring a vision of somebody and you say, I love you, I'm sorry, I forgive you, and thank you. So I love you, I'm sorry, I forgive you, and thank you. Um, the idea here is that we're we want to pray for them as we would pray for our most beloved. Um, that's where we want to get to. And then how long will this take? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. You know, Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? And he said seven times, 70 times. So as long um, as it takes. So I've shared this with you before, but to bring this all together, I'm, uh, I'm going to share with you a journey that I had with um, a friend named Bluto. And you'll see why he's called Bluto, because he's blue. And so one night, a few friends and I were commiserating over Bluto and um, you know, just everything that Bluto had done. And all, oh my gosh, you know, we were just in our, in our space of just unrighteous judgment and saying how bad he was. And I mean, there was no love there. And after this, and I don't remember if I read it or it just came to me, but the, the Zen story with two monks. And these two monks were walking, they came to a river pass and they needed to get across the river. And as they were there, there was a woman there and she needed to get across, but she was afraid of the water. So the one Zen monk put her on his back, took her across, put her on the other side. About two miles later, 
the Zen monk who wasn't carrying her turned to the other Zen monk and said, I cannot believe that you picked that woman up. In our teachings, we do not touch women. And the Zen monk who carried the woman said, wow, that's interesting. I put her down two miles ago. How come you're still carrying her? And you know, that, you know, remembering that and reading that, I realized that even though Bluto was no longer physically in my life, I was carrying him around everywhere. I am like, come on, Bluto, get in the car with me because I have some things to say to you, Bluto, and I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to tell you what for the entire drive to wherever I'm going. And we get to the grocery store, oh, no, you're not staying in here. You're coming in with me, Bluto, because I have some more things to say to you. Oh, and when we get home, I'm going to invite you into my most sacred place, my most sacred space, into my home. I'm going to have you come and sit at the dinner table and, and I'm going to tell my partner all about you and I'm going to even take you into my bed at night because, man, I have some more things to say to you. Anybody ever do that? Ever get so consumed in that that it's like everywhere you go, there they are, but they're not because it's all a figment of your imagination. And I realized the Zen monk story reminded me that I had a choice and all that I had to do was I had to put Bluto down. So how did I do that? Willingness and awareness. Every time, and I had to make myself do this, every time that that energy started to come up, I had to say, because I was not in a place of love yet, get out. You are not invited here. And I had to do that over and over and over again. You know, when Jesus is tempted um, by Satan, what does he say? Get behind me. And it's so get behind me, error thinking of Bluto. And I, and I had to do it over and over and over again. Now, it did make a huge difference ultimately because before that, I was spending about 90% of my time in this pain and anger, and it got me down to about you know, 20%. Um, so I realized that what I needed to do then was I needed simply to turn to love. Um, so where, where it says, pray for your enemies, I just started to bring an image of Bluto into my mind, and I just saw him surrounded in light, and I said, please forgive me. Please forgive me for how I've spoken about you, for how I've thought about you, for all, oh, please forgive me. But what was interesting was in that time, I was guided to, I mean, I'm sorry, because I did that opposite. I forgive you is what I started with. I forgive you. But what I was guided to was to ask him to forgive me, because I realized how far out of the realm of spirit I was. And then I was guided to turn that forgiveness on myself and to tell myself that I, that I forgave myself. And it was incredibly powerful because you know what? It always comes back here, doesn't it? We have one finger pointing out and we have three pointing right back at us. It always comes back here. And I'm gonna tell you there are times when I don't wanna believe that it comes back to me, but it always does come back to me because I am the only one who can make a different choice as to what I'm gonna allow in my mind and in my heart, right? And, and you are the only one who can do that too. So it felt really good and I'm done, man. I'm, I'm like, I've got this forgiveness thing down. This is so great. I felt so good. And one day I ran into somebody and they started talking about Bluto and bam, there he was. And I started commiserating once again about Bluto. Here's the thing. When Jesus said, seven times 70 times. That could mean that if Bluto offends me seven times 70 times, I need to forgive that. But what it meant to me with this was as long as it takes. As many times as I need to go through that process, as many times as I need to bring him into the light, as many times as I need to forgive him and see him forgiving me and forgiving myself, as many times as it takes, that's what it takes. And the beautiful thing about it, you guys, is you're not going to ever get to seven times 70 times if you're sincere about this. You may have 25, you may have 30 times, but you will get there 
if you're sincere about it and it will no longer be something that's that you're carrying I also always love to tell this story when I'm talking about forgiveness and it's the story of the little soul in the Sun by Neil Donald Walsh and even though this is a story it is so powerful and the story is that there was this little bright soul and this little bright soul was getting ready to incarnate into into earth and this little soul said to God I want to experience everything I just want to experience everything and God said that's wonderful and the little soul said you know I think really in particular what I want to experience I want to experience forgiveness and God said, well, there's really nothing to forgive. I'm not sure how that can happen. And the little soul, oh, I really want to experience forgiveness. And th just then, an older soul came up to the little soul and said, little soul, I will help you experience forgiveness when we incarnate into earth. And the little soul said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being willing to do that. And, you know, but how are you going to do that? And the older soul said, little soul, here's the thing, is that I'm going to show up as something really awful in your life, and I'm going to hurt you, and I'm going to make you so sad and so angry. And the little soul just kind of got quiet and said, oh, okay, well, thank you. And the old soul said, but here's the thing that I need from you. When I show up as that awful thing in your life, I need you to remember who I really am so that you can help me to remember who I really am. Wow. And here's the thing, you guys, I think that is our, our journey, is we may not ever help somebody else to remember who they are, but our journey is to remember for them. And to remember, just like we talk about every week, what we teach here is that we're all beloved of the one. We have all come from the same source. That we are all born into original blessing. And I know that that is just a story, but I gotta tell you, that story has helped me so many times, and it has changed, it has changed how I have seen people in my life. I have been able to go to some of the people in my life and say thank you. Thank you. Because, because of how you showed up, I grew. And thank you for that. And that's an amazing place to be. So are we ready to forgive? Yes. Are we ready to forgive? Yes. <laughs> we're ready to lay it down and we're ready to be free. Um, I love the, in the movie, The Wedding Date, this guy's miserable and single, and he said, do you think I want to be single and miserable? And the girl says, yes. When you're ready to be unsingle and miserable and unmiserable, you will. And so it's this, that when we're ready to finally move on with our lives and live the life of freedom that we're intended to live, we will absolutely do it. So a few things. Don't stumble over things behind you. Forget what hurt you in the past, but don't forget what it taught you. To be true, you must embrace the life that's calling you. And let's share this last one together. Dear past, thank you for all the lessons. Dear future, I'm ready now. And so it is.